Good afternoon and welcome viewers to the CEC live lecture for the science band. In this lecture, we have with us Dr. Sonia Bansal from the YMCA University of Science and Technology and she is from the Department of Physics. She has been talking to us and is taking uh, to the world of lasers. In the previous two lectures, we have discussed about the properties and significance of lasers. And in this lecture, which is the third part of the series, she will be sharing more properties of nature. So welcome Dr. Sonia Bansal to our studio and let us proceed with this talk. Thank you ma'am. Dear students, we are talking about the laser and we are talking about the laser physics where we discuss about the characteristics of laser and we discuss about the what are the three important processes which required for the lasing action in which stimulated emission is a most prominent method to get the lasing action or to get the laser light. Apart from this we discuss about the pumping process to get the stimulation we required the pumping through the to uh, go to uh, lift the molecules or atoms from lower state to the higher state. After that when we achieve the population at upper level then we will say it it, it is a population inversion means at the higher level now the atoms and molecules are more populated as compared to the atoms and molecules at the lower state because we are here using the uh, thermal equilibrium condition at which the atoms and molecules are at the lower state but as we talk about the non-equilibrium state the molecules and atoms will jump to the higher state and we get the population inversion. Population inversion means we are having the population more at the upper level so that we can achieve the stimulated emission more as compared to the spontaneous emission. Now the process to get the absorption is require the pumping. Pumping require to jump the electron from lower state to the higher state or to achieve the population inversion so that we can do the stimulated emission and get the lasing action. Now here we discuss about the some pumping process. First we discuss what is a pumping. Pumping is the process by which the atoms are raised from the lower level to the upper level and energy to be supplied somehow to the laser medium to raise atoms from the lower level to the excited level and for maintaining the population at the excited level at a value greater than that of the lower energy. It means at the upper level we are having the more excited atoms. Usual method which we use the heat and material but heating materials only increases the average energy of the atoms but does not make the N2 at the upper level means the number of population at the higher level cannot be achieved more by using the heating of the material. Then population inversion cannot be achieved by the heating the material. Then what we require for this we require the pumping. Pumping may be of the many type. To create the state of population inversion the selective excite the atoms in the material to a particular energy levels. Most common methods of the pumping make use of the light and electrons means to achieve the pumping or to raise the atoms from the lower state to the higher state we require the light means photon and electrons or ions to jump the electron at from the lower level to the higher level. Then first we start with the optical pumping that require the light means photons are required to jump the electron from higher state to lower state to the higher state. Optical pumping use of photons to excite the atoms. A light source or a flash discharge tube used to illuminate the laser medium and the photon of appropriate frequency excite the atoms to an uppermost level. Atoms drop to the metastable level to create the state of population inversion so that we can achieve the uh, stimulated emission. The optical pump process may be flash discharge tubes, continuously operational lamps, spark gases or auxiliary laser are used as a pumping source in the optical pumping. Optical pumping is suitable for the laser medium transparent to the pump light. Optical pumping is used for the solid state crystalline and liquid tunable dye laser. Means here we excite the atoms from lower state to the higher state in the lasing system then we require the optical pumping and two most 
uh, useful lasers which which use the optical bumping are the solid state crystalline laser and the liquid tunable laser in which we use the photon to excite the atoms from lower state to the higher state now second is the electrical pumping electric as we talk about two processes means photons and second is the uh, electrons now here electrical pumping the electrical pumping can be used only in case of laser material that can conduct electricity without destroying the laser lasing activity now this is limiting to the gases electrical pumping used in the gas laser to pump the electron from lower state to the higher state now in case of the gas laser a high voltage pulse initially ionized the gases so that it conducts electricity an electric current flowing through the gas excites the atom to the excited state from where they drop to the meta stable upper laser level leading to pi meta stable state we discussed that it is that state where the electrons or atoms can stay for a longer time similarly here we are saying that we achieve the more population at the upper level or at the meta stable level as we jump the electron from lower state to the highest level then it will spontaneously emit to the meta stable state and here the atoms electrons will stay for a longer time for achieving the population inversion direct conversion is another method in the semiconductor lasers also the electrical pumping is used but here it is not the atoms that are excited it is the current carriers where we use the electrons and holes pairs which are excited and a population inversion is achieved in the junction region later we will discuss in brief but here we see that electron and holes are used for the semiconductor laser electrons recombines with the holes in the junction regions and producing the laser light thus a direct conversion of the electricity and electrical energy into the light energy takes place in the semiconductor laser so we here use the direct conversion of the electrical energy into the light energy in case of the semiconductor lasers now the most important um requirement for the laser is the active medium what is the active medium active medium is that medium on the basis of that we define the type of lasers moreover on the basis of that we get the lasing output now active medium all types of atoms are not suitable for the laser operation it means all the atoms are not produce the laser light there are only the some atoms which produce the laser light in a medium consisting of a different species of atoms only a small fraction of the atoms of a particular species are stu stu suitable for the stimulated emission and the laser action it means only those atom which produce the stimulated emission and laser action are used for the laser system those atom which cause light amplification are called the active centers it means the main thing in the laser we require the population inversion means so that we can get the stimulated emission and the atom must produce a laser action and moreover that of atom in which we can produce the light uh, means light amplification can take place in the laser now the rest of the medium acts as a host and the support active centers the medium hosting the active center is called an active medium where we can get the where we can get the light amplification then that center and that um, that medium is known as the active medium an active medium is thus a medium which when excited reaches the state of population inversion and eventually causes light amplification these are the two basic requirement for the laser action first is the population inversion so that and second is the light amplification the population inversion together stimulated emission and after light amplification we can get the lasing action the active medium may be solid liquid or a gas on the basis of that we can define the type of laser 
if we use the active material as a solid then we can say it is a solid state laser if we use the liquid then we will say it is a liquid laser or we can say dye laser it, if we use a dye in in the liquid laser if you use a dye then we say that it is a dye laser gas means what, what type of gases we are using in the lasing action then we will say that it is a gas laser there are many different type of lasers we will define it later now the meta stable state we are talking again and again the meta stable state which is the most prominent state to get the lasing action what is this meta stable state an atom can be excited to a higher level by supplying the energy to it when we pump the atom from the lower state to the higher state then what happen normally the excited state have the shorter life times means in terms of nanosecond which is 10 power minus 9 second and release their excess energy by the spontaneous emission and the through spontaneous emission atoms and molecules jump to the ground state atoms do not stay at such excited state for a longer time to get the stimulated emission through the pumping agent continuously raises the atom to the excited level many of them rapidly undergo the spontaneous transitions to the lower energy level and because of that we can uh, cannot achieve the population inversion then for establishing the population inversion the excited atoms are required to wait at the upper lasing level till a large number of atoms accumulate at that level it means at the higher level we require the more number of uh, atoms and we get the large number of the atoms accumulate at the higher level to get the population inversion now what is the need an excited state of a longer lifetime such longer lived upper levels from where an excited atom does not return to the lower level at once but remains excited for a appreciable time are known as the meta stable state and this state is also known as the relaxation state of an electron and electron and or atom it means here the atoms and molecule can stay for a longer time atom stay at a meta stable state for about 10 to the power minus 6 to the 10 to the power minus 3 second and this is the 10 to the power minus 3 to 10 to the power 6 times longer than that of the time of the stay of the excited levels it means here the atoms and molecules can excite it for a longer time the possible for the large number of the atoms to accumulate at the meta stable level the meta stable state population can exceed the population of the lower level and leads to the state of population inversion now is if the meta stable state do not exist there could no population inversion it means meta stable state plays a very important role to achieve the population inversion if we are not having the population inversion means no stimulated emission possible and hence no laser light is possible the foundation to the laser operation is the existence of the meta stable state which is the lower state of the upper highest upper level now, now uh, next is a light amplification as we are discussing the two phenomena is very important first is the population inversion and second is the light amplification then what is the light amplification and oscillations with the active medium in the inverted state a photon of the appropriate energy can stimulate the emission of the cascade of the photons as we are saying that all the atoms and molecules are at the metastable state now at this metastable state we achieve the light amplification and this where we achieve the emission of the cascade of the more photon through the stimulated emission that it is called the amplification the initial photon may be looked upon the input signal the active medium as the quantum optical amplifier and the emerging light as amplified output and then this amplified output is defined the laser light now degree of amplification is measured as the gain 
how much how much intensity or how much light we gain that is defined by the amplification defined by the gain which is the increase in the intensity means degree of amplification is the gain and it it is the increase in the intensity when a light beam pass through the active medium and then we define it as g is equal to 1 by i into di by dx i is the incident intensity gain is the amount of stimulated emission as we are talking that we are getting the amplification after the stimulated emission then we will define the gain is the amount of stimulated emission which a photon can generate as it travels in the given distance how much light is passed through the active medium that define the gain now for example if g is equal to 4 per centimeter it measures the one photon produces four photons per each centimeter it travels in the medium then again we will define as a 4 per centimeter here. Now unfortunately laser materials have a very low gain for the order of 0.0001 per centimeter to the 0.01 centimeter. It means that the photon has to travel a long length of the laser material for producing the large amplification means the photon have to travel the longer length it may pass from it, it, it may travel more distance in the active medium so that the light amplification can be takes place. For example again we take the if we have a material whose gain is 0.001 per centimeter if we wish to achieve a light amplification of 1000 times it is calculated that the light has to travel about 69 meters in the medium. Such a long distances are obviously not practical. However, the important point to note here is that the amount of amplification increases rapidly with the distance. As the distance increases, the amplification increases. One of the way of making the light pass through a longer length of the laser medium is by keeping mirrors on both the sides of the short laser rod or tube to achieve the to achieve the population or to achieve the amplification here we use the mirrors on both the side of the light the light bounce back and the foot between the mirrors and make many pro, many passes through the medium increases the effective distance of the travel by the many times if we put the active medium in between the two mirrors then the light will bounce back through the active medium and through which we can overcome the distance uh, problem and such a arrangement of the mirror transforms the simple amplifying med me uh, medium into a source of light means here by using the mirrors we use the medium as a active medium as a source of light Although population inversion is necessary for the light amplification, it alone is not sufficient to make the stimulated emission dominate other processes. This is a one of the process which is required for the laser action. But apart from this, we are having the other, other uh, processes also. According to Einstein relation, a larger stimulated emission, large radiation energy, density that is rho nu is required to present in the active medium. The pair of mirrors helps to maintain the large radiation density in the medium. For this a rod shaped laser medium without end mirror act as a amplifier. A light beam appropriate frequency incident on one end triggers stimulated emission and an amplified output will emerge from the other end. Here we it is defining here that uh, that here we are having a active medium in between the two mirrors. From the one mirror we pass the light beam and it pass through the active medium. Then stimulated emission takes place and it emerge out from the another mirror which is partially coated and then through which we can get the laser light. Here this is example the optical resonator 
this is the laser very much similar to an electrical oscillator here we see electrical oscillator and amplifier tuned to specific frequency provided with the positive feedback here we define the electronic oscillator now low frequency oscillator and high frequency oscillator oscillators are required uh, here we see that a laser very much similar to an uh, electronic oscillator means we are getting here the low frequency oscillator and at high frequencies the feedback using the electric wire but here in the at high frequency different kind of feedback mechanism are required not feasible to fabricate the cavity for use at light frequency dimensions order of 0.5 mm here we are using the word cavity as we are talking about that the, we put the acry material in between the two mirrors when we do this arrangement then we will get the optical cavity means we put the active material in the two mirrors from the one side we pass the light and from the other side the laser light will emerge out that pro that uh, that um, that uh, box is known as the cavity or the re resonator or that is also known as the optical cavity now tons and shallow no necessity for a closed cavity open cavity in the form of two parallel mirrors serve the purpose means it is not necessary that we sandwich into the box but here the open cavity is also useful to produce a laser light in the laser the feedback obtained by placing active medium between a pair of mirrors facing each other means we are having the two mirrors one from the left side and one from the right side of the active medium the role of the input signal played by the chance photo spontaneously emitted along the optic axis of the laser rod but here we require the amplification then amplification as a photons reflected back into the active medium by the mirror several times and gaining the strength at each passes through which the amplification will takes place now this is the this is the the uh, this is the arrangement and this is also known as a cavity and optical cavity this is this is defined here the open cavity in this cavity the amplification of the uh, electrons and atoms takes place here the electron oscillators tank circuit or a resonant circuit to build up the large number with the moderate input in the laser the pair of mirrors constitute an optical resonator an ob optical resonator which is the fabry parrot resonator and this is defined with this diagram here we are having the two mirrors in between that we are having the active medium and the light from the one side light will uh, pass through the medium and the from here the light will comes out the laser light will become out and this uh, mirror may be plane or curved and design such that the one reflect all the light that reaches it while the other most of the light incident on it so we prepare the, this type of cavity to get the amplification of the light now action of the optical resonator we also called it as a resonator cavity or resonator is the same thing the action of the optical resonator successive state stages of the action of an optical resonator here we define one by one here we are having the different phenomena taking place as here we see that this is a reflecting mirror and this is a semi transparent mirror and this whole the um, this whole the arrangement is called the optical resonator or the optical cavity here at one side we are having a reflecting mirror and other side we are having the semi transparent mirror and in between that we are having the active center or we are having the host material and this is a non excited state it means all the atoms and molecules are at the lower level now here what what happening as we say that the atoms are at the lower state when we do the optical pumping they excite and jump to the higher state or we can say it acquires energy atoms acquire energy and and jump to the higher state and this phenomena the second process is the optical pumping in the optical pumping excite the atom to the higher state now here in the diagram they are moving randomly here we see that all the atoms getting the energy and moving randomly after that 
some atoms when are the excited state jump to the lower state and that is the spontaneous emission takes place but we require the stimulated emission to get the amplification of the light and to achieve the lasing action so here in this uh, diagram in the c diagram stimulated emission and spontaneous emission taking place here you see in the diagram d the atoms are reflected back from this mirror and bounce back and here they all are aligned all are aligned means all the spontaneous emitted electrons or atoms align themselves in the direction in the one direction so that the coalescence can be achieved when they align themselves or they are coherent after that we can get the light amplification when they strike on the mirrors between uh, 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 both the two sides of the cavity and when they strike with the mirrors the amplification of the light takes place and when the amplification of light takes place the light oscillations will emerge out from the semi transparent mirror and in this manner we can get the laser light from the one side of the cavity thank you dear viewers we'll take a short break and after this break we'll continue with our lecture on the lasers <laughs> Welcome back viewers, we were on the topic of lasers and we have with us Dr. Sonal Bansal. This exciting field of lasers and how she is simplifying all these aspects for us. So let's uh, welcome back Dr. Sonia Bansal to the studio. Thank you ma'am. Mm -hmm. Dear students, we are talking about the laser, population inversion, stimulated emission and these are the repeated words which, which we are using for the laser laser but these are very important to define the laser and it is very much uh, um, interesting to understand understand the laser by these words and then these words are are very important for the laser and these features are also very important and without this the laser is not possible so again and again in the when we talk about the laser physics then these words will be repeatedly used now here again we define the diagram we are talking about the light amplification and in the light amplification we are talking about that how we can get the laser light in the light amplification we require the cavity require the cavity and what is this cavity which is which is made of the two mirrors and the active medium in between that now here we see the one mirror is a high reflector and the second is the partially reflector one is the high reflector and second is output coupler is also called this is total reflecting this is a partially reflecting from here we get the laser light one by one we discuss about this diagram the laser resonator consists of laser medium maybe gas maybe liquid 
or may be solid. It depends upon the type of laser. Between the HR and OC mirror, HR high resonator, OC means output counter coupler. Then here at this is uh, this is that state where all the atoms are at the lower state and the lasing medium at a ground state. Now second process we talked pumping means raise the atoms and molecules from ground state to the higher state. We are using the pumping energy it may be electrical, it may be optical or it may be chemical to raise the atom from lower state to the higher state. Now in this diagram we are achieving the population inversion. The pink dot defined that the atoms are at the energy level 1. But here the blue dots define that atoms reached at the energy level 2. It means they gained the energy and jump to the higher state. After the population achieving, then we have the spontaneous emission and the stimulated emission. The st spontaneous emission randomly atoms uh, jump back to the lower state and here in the green dots define the stimulated spontaneous emission. But in case of the stimulated emission, we require the meta stable state so that the atoms can stay for a longer time at that state and from there we can induce or we can stimulate the atom to jump to the lower state and we can achieve the stimulated emission and our main aim in the laser system that the stimulated emission is more as compared to the spontaneous emission. Here the stimulated emission defined by the uh, uh, yellow dots. The atoms are molecule depending upon the lasing medium. Now here the spontaneous emission start of the stimulated emission takes place. The stimulated emission takes place so that we can get the we can get the laser light or we can get the amplification. Now here the stimulated emission build up and all the molecules and atoms are are moving in a phase and all the matter at a coherent laser beam will be generated through the stimulated emission and we can get the laser beam light at the output or through the output coupler. This is the basic laser operation. Now what are the threshold condition to get the amplification? Now light bouncing back and forth in the optical resonator undergo the amplification as well as suffer the various losses. Amplification takes place and the losses also takes place in the cavity. The losses occur mainly due to the transmission at a output mirror and second the scattering and the diffraction of the light within the active medium and because of this the loss of the light takes place. Now for the proper build of the oscillators essentially is that the amplification between the two consecutive reflections of light from rear and mirror can balance losses so that amplification can take place. Now determination of the threshold gain by considering the change in the intensity of a beam of light undergoing a round trip within the resonator that how much gain we achieved when the atoms bounce back in the cavity. Now consider a laser medium filled with the space between the two mirrors M1 and M2 of the reflectivity R1 and R2 respectively the mirror separated by a distance L. Then I note the intensity of the light beam at mirror M1 or we can say this is the incident light on the mirror M1. Now in the travelling from the mirror M1 to the mirror M2, the beam intensity increases from I0 to IL. Why L? Because here we, we are using the mirror distance L. So here the intensity must be increases from I0 to IL which is given by IL is equal to I0 e power gamma minus alpha SL. 
after reflection at M2 the beam intensity will be defined as after the complete round trip the final intensity will be I 2 L is equal to R 1 R 2 E power gamma minus alpha S into 2 L because we are taking the round trip. So, here we use the 2 L. Now, this is the growth of the proper growth of power through the cavity. This is the cavity how here we define by the wave equation. The length of the active medium is L uh, and the cavity length is equal to L. The, the here we see that this is a total reflecting mirror R2 is equal to 1, here is the partially reflecting mirror R1 less than 1. Then here we see that light is coming from this is a this is the incident light whose energy is E naught and it is moving uh, and this will change E is equal to E naught exponent of gamma minus alpha uh, I L into L. Then after that it will bounce back through the partially reflected mirror and then it go to the total reflecting mirror. Then after that when it is bounced back and one round trip takes place then energy will be converted into E naught exponent of 2 into gamma minus alpha I L R 1 N R 2. This define that this energy is converted into this energy. This is the incident energy and this is the one round trip energy. The amplification obtained during the round trip defined by G is equal to I into 2 L as the 2 L is the 2 L length of the cavity for a round trip and uh, I note is incident light and which is equal to R1 R2 R1 R2 E gamma minus alpha S 2 L. Then product R1 and R2 represent the losses at the mirrors where alpha S includes all the distributed losses such as scattering, diffraction and absorption occurring in the medium. Means losses or the balance by the gain when G greater than equal to 1 or I into 2 L greater than I naught it leads to the condition or taking logarithm on both the side we get 2 L into gamma minus alpha S greater than equal to minus log of R1 and R2 means gamma is greater than equal to alpha S. Here we define R1 and R2 represent the losses at the mirrors where alpha S includes the distributed loss in the scattering. And here the diffraction and absorption occurring in the medium and because of that losing balance the gain and which if the gain greater than equal to 1 it leads to the condition where we define it as 2 L is equal to gamma minus alpha S alpha is scattering and then we can get the gamma greater than equal to alpha S gain must be equal to the scattering minus 1 by 2 L log of R1 R2. Now this is a condition for the lasing this is a very important condition by using this we can get the laser light gamma is greater than equal to alpha s plus 1 by 2 l log of 1 by r1 r2. Now showing the initial gain must exit the sum of the losses in the cavity means when the in the cavity there must be a gain and losses takes place simultaneously. This condition is used to determine the threshold value of the pumping energy necessary for the lasing action and the gamma define the amplification of the laser dependent on how hard the laser medium is pumped and um, because because pumping through pumping we achieve the population inversion and the stimulated emission and amplification is required the gamma amplification which define the which define the amplification of the laser and it depends upon the active medium uh, active medium and the pumping how much we are pump the atoms from lower state to the higher state. As the pump power is slowly increased a value of gamma called threshold value will be reached and the laser start oscillating.
it means amplification must be done as a threshold value that will be defined by the gamma th, th for the threshold value. Threshold value gamma th is given by gamma th is equal to alpha s plus alpha s for the scattering plus 1 by 2 l log of 1 by r1 and r2. We know that R1 and R2 represent the losses at the mirror and this value threshold value this threshold value which is gamma th define the amplification and define the all the losses and the gain in the system. For the laser to oscillate gamma must be greater than gamma th. Th threshold condition means gamma the value of amplification must be greater than that of the threshold value so that the lasing action can be takes place. The threshold condition for the lasing this state the criteria when the net gain would be able to counteract the effect of the losses in the cavity through the losses we can define the gain. The value of the gamma must be at least gamma th threshold value for the laser oscillation to commence. If gamma greater than gamma th greater than threshold value, the waves grow and the amplified reaches saturation. It lowers the value of gamma in terms and eventually an equilibrium values is attained at gamma th. Uh, it means the value must be greater than that of the threshold value. The amplification must be greater than that of the threshold amplification. Now, the critical population inversion defines a quantity nth means population inversion depend upon the number of atoms at the excited state. Now, nth as nth is equal to n2 minus n1 means difference between the population of two states. N2 is the population of the upper state and N1 is the population of the lower state. And the NTH critical population inversion NTH defined as the N2 minus N1 population of the upper state to the lower state called the critical population inversion or it is also called the threshold population inversion density. And it is defined as NTH is equal to 8 pi nu naught square tau sp sp for the spontaneous nu at uh, gamma th that is the gain uh, del nu that is the frequency difference and v square, uh, uh, nu square which is the which is the frequency is equal to uh, now here we put the value of gamma gain and then we can get the difference between the or the threshold population of the two states that is the that here we put the value of tau, here we put the value of amplification or gamma th, then it is alpha s minus 1 by 2 l log of r1 r2. Now, in a system in which mirrors and the scattering losses are small and the laser medium not being pumped, then what happened? Then this nth will be converted into this 4 pi nu naught square tau sp del nu divided by nu square ic divided by l. Ic is the fraction losses per round trip. In order to achieve the critical inversion with the lowest pumping power, the atom must have a narrow line width del nu as possible. The laser condition becomes more difficult to be satisfied as a laser frequency increases. The laser condition will not be achieved as the frequency increases. The condition for the steady state oscillation where we have according to the wave picture of the light, the light amplification implies a continuous and marked increase in the amplitude of the wave. We are talking about the amplification, means amplifications where the amplitude of light is increasing and all are in phase and we achieve the laser light or we achieve the more intense light if they are in a phase. Then the necessary to fulfill the phase condition in addition to the amplitude condition. 
again here for the waves making a complete round trip inside the resonator the phase delay must be some multiple of 2 pi here in the diagram we see that the all the waves are in a phase and the, it is defined by the amplitude in the cavity now imposes a constraint on relationship between the wavelength lambda and the length of the rod l as the <coughs> as the amplification depends upon the wavelength of light which is incident on it and also on the length of the cavity or the active medium then we define it as 2 mu l is equal to m lambda m is equal to 1 2 3 it may be integral multiple then mu is equal to refractive index of the medium then mu l now become the optical path through which the light can pass through the medium now next this is defined as the length of the resonator this is the length of the resonator should accommodate an integral number of standing half waves here in the diagram we see the mirror mirror when is fully uh, fully um, coated and which is partially coated now here we see that the different and the value of m it may be uh, all the values are integral multiple m is equal to 1 this way where m is equal to 1 this where m is equal to 2 this way we achieve and m is equal to 3 this we achieve and in this manner the all the waves are bounced back in the cavity the condition of the resonance between the mirror cavity and the light waves is defined here the cavity resonance frequency maybe the cavity will be the cavity will be resonant for those waves which fit an integral number of half wavelength between the mirrors. Now, uh, wavelength of such a waves in defined terms of the frequency. Theoretically, the cavity resonate at a very large number of frequency means cavity res re resonance on the cavity will takes place when the frequency is large and satisfying the above condition which one is spacing between the neighboring frequency is constant here the cavity resonance frequency representing the possible longitudinal mode here we see that this uh, spacing between the neighboring frequency is constant that is del nu is defined by nu m plus 1 minus nu m uh, defined by the c divided by 2 mu mu is a refractive index and l is the length of the cavity and c is the wavelength of light the laser does not operate at a low frequencies is operate only at select few frequencies for which gain exceeds all the cavity losses it means we are having the laser operation only those systems which obeys the amplification must be greater than that of the threshold value and very less losses takes place and not for all the frequencies are required but for the very few frequencies are used for the lasing action. Now again saturations when the uh, uh, these are the main point for the gain saturation where the population inversion condition is created in the lasing medium by the pumping agent light of suitable frequency induces transition from the E2 to E1 gain of the medium exceeds the threshold value and the amplification takes place the lasing beings and the strength of the light field within the active medium increases exponentially means the uh, light must increases exponentially in the active medium when passed through it the rate of which uh, 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 takes place in proportional to the strength of the light field present where we define the intensity of light builds up in the medium and in the medium amplification and amplification of the light takes place the gain is achieved more as compared to as compared to the losses so that the intensity of the light can be increased now this is the as the intensity of light due to the stimulated emission increases the degree of population inversion decreases the gain will be decreases now the gain ultimately settles down at the value where the rate of production of the excess inverted population is balanced by the rate of decrease through the stimulated emission 
and moreover it happens when the gain just balance the losses in the medium a threshold value and at corresponding to this situation the steady state condition n2 minus n1 remains equal to nth in the steady state condition even though the pumping rate is greater than that of the threshold pumping it the value of n2 minus n1 must be equal to n nth to sum up light amplification in the laser medium cannot increase without limit uh, up to up to a limit we amplify the atoms or electrons in the cavity as amplification increases there is a companion decreases in the population at the upper level at the result the population inversion is reduced and we cannot achieve the stimulated emission the number of stimulated emission events decreases and the amplifications goes down if the light amplification uh, if the amplification increases in the cavity we are not able to achieve the lasing action it means a threshold value is only required to achieve the population inversion next is the, the reduction in the population inversion and the consequent self adjustment of the gain causes by the presence of light field is called the gain saturation gain gain saturation is also required it means more population if we achieve then it's not necessary that we can get the good stimulated emission the gain saturation is basically that mechanism which adjusts adjust the gain to the value where it just balances the losses in the cavity so that steady oscillations can result and amplification of light takes place and lasing light can be achieved the gain width by defining the a group of atoms radiate at the same frequency however because of the various broadening mechanism and then a small spread of the frequency about the central value as a result the central frequency interval which is called the bandwidth and corresponding to the stimulated transition this bandwidth is required for the stimulated transition in which we define that this Uh, this diagram define the bandwidth which define the gain profile with the superposed loss level the limited range of the frequency over which stimulated emission can provide sufficient gain this band this band define the gain profile and this define the sufficient gain in the emission line width or the gain bandwidth which is offered which is also referred to as a gain profile this band this this bandwidth define the gain profile how much we gain in the amplification the line mn here this line define the cavity loss level up to here we can get the different losses in the cavity and this is the shaded uh, shaded area defined the laser gain the laser gain is more as compared to the losses the gain between means uh, delta nu which is defined by the measure at the cavity losses level which is defined by the m and we separate the loss and the gain in the cavity thank you very much thank you ma'am very informative lecture this we had on lasers uh, dear students if you have any queries please do write in to us at the email address provided also you can call us on the toll free number which is 18001010430 thank you ma'am thank, ma uh, thank you dear students